Hello, hello, everybody. I see Jamie, Kevin, Tyler. Thank you guys for making it. If you're here for the webinar, why is everybody talking about mindset? You have made it to the right place. This is a free webinar put on by the B2B Writing Institute. Where we help people learn how to write and sell really excellent business to business marketing content. I'm the founder, Sarah Griesenbach, and I've been freelancing in the B2B space since about 2013. Now, the best metaphor I could think of for mindset, to describe mindset, is like waking up one day and realizing you've been walking around with toilet paper stuck to your feet for just years. Because as it turns out, just by being human, no matter what your experience has been, just by being human, there are these thought patterns and beliefs and limitations that we carry with us that aren't true. So we're making decisions, we're holding ourselves back, we're, we're taking what looks like the safe path as if it's our choice, when in reality, we're just working out these patterns that we're living without knowing it. So today, we've gathered four people who introduced some of the things your brain is doing, and you're gonna decide if you wanna let your brain keep doing that. And if you don't, we're gonna have ideas for how to knock yourself out of those patterns and actually achieve all the stuff that you know you're capable of. So these are some of the best teachers in mindset, psychology, in the business space. These are four teachers who hold nothing back when they're serving. So they are some of the most generous people I've ever met. So we're going to get right to it. So I'm going to turn it over to Linda now. I'm going to share her site as well. But Linda is a master mindset coach for the career history as a practicing lawyer and a copywriter. And now she just helps people live, at least she helps me live my best life. <laughs> so Linda, um, thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. This is so fun because Nick, I wanted to jump in and but you were covering, yes, all of that. So I loved what you just shared. And I'm hoping I'm going to build on what Nick shared about self-sabotage, but I might be going a little bit like we're a drone. I might be going up a little and then we'll go in and out and down. So I want to just applaud all of you who are here because the truth is if you were here, you're one of a really small percentage of people who are actually getting that the thing that's stopping you from getting to the next level, maybe isn't more doing, maybe it isn't more writing, maybe it isn't more of anything that you've been up to. And it's actually pulling back and seeing what's happening between your ears. The truth is I um, coined a phrase mindset first a long time ago. It's my podcast is mindset first, because I want you to start, at least I hope you leave here thinking the answer is really beginning with mindset and ending with mindset. So Sarah said, I am a recovering lot of things. <laughs> I'm a recovering attorney. I'm a recovering copywriter. I don't say I'm a recovering copywriter because I still write. I write for myself now exclusively. So that's cool. But my job is really, I rephrase it as a success strategist because what I do is really help people dismantle the blocks so you can actually implement the real strategies because we're all busy doing things that we think we should be doing. How many of you woke up this morning going, I should be doing this. I have to be doing this. I need to be doing this, right? And so we end up following a list of shoulds, but we're not really creating the business that we want. So when Sarah invited me to talk to you guys, I was really excited because there's a hundred different places to go. And having experienced all of the stuff that you guys are experiencing as writers, as freelancers, I was like, what's the biggest thing I want to impart? And when it comes to this, the truth is that the thing that slows us down from having the business we want, from having the growth, having that life where our voice isn't echoing constantly is ultimately the stories we tell ourselves, right? It is the stories that stop us from being intentional, that keep us from building what we want. And what is my biggest issue is keeps us in groupthink. It keeps us building a business that looks like everyone else's, but doesn't have us question, is this right for me? So I got to ask you guys, and I like chat. I do not have slides. I'm not a slide girl. So this is going to be interactive. So I'm going to be asking, and I want you to bring up some of your stuff if you're here. So tell me how many of you in the last week, two weeks, have had the feeling of, am I doing this right? There's, is there someone who's doing it better? Am I enough? Every day, ding, ding, every single day. How many of you hop on to social media feeling really good about yourself for a moment and then look at somebody else in your space and go, shit, I'm behind. And I swear, I apologize for anybody who has some issues with this. Not a lot, I do occasionally. Sarah, I'm in your head because I felt all of this, right? 
comparisonitis, negative self-talk, asking that question of, am I enough? These are the stories that we fill. And what happens is they keep us from writing our own playbook for success, writing what we want. So why is this important? Why do we care? It's important because I want you to all know there's no one way of doing this freelancing writing thing. You may hear from other copywriters who had courses. There's only one email way, one way to write emails. There's only one way to do launches. No, you shouldn't do launches. In fact, you should do this. Freaking leaves you feeling insane half the time. And so, so people have having success very actually, rarely actually affects you or takes away. Exactly. But we end up having this less than feeling like I'm never going to be enough. I'm never going to get to where I want to go. And we end up moving from one should to another. We have limiting beliefs that say, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve this. So the truth is that I want to really talk about these stories we tell ourselves and how we can start to move away from them and have the ability to be super intentional. So our mindset is the single most important factor when it comes to success. My big phrase is success is in your head. And chances are you've had mindset telling you that you can't do a whole bunch of things, right? Isn't it amazing? Who does this? Isn't it amazing that we are always looking for the bad? How many times are you looking to prove all of your fears? How many times are you looking to prove, I can't do that? I can't be, that's too hard. We're never looking for proof that, you know, I'm an amazing writer. I changed somebody's business today. I did something great. I'm the contrary though. That's an interesting one. We could talk about that sometime, Kevin. I do get always that one person who's like, no, I'm always focusing on this one thing. I feel I can do anything, but are you doing it? right? The question starts to be, I feel like I have had people in my groups who are like, no, I feel like I can do that better. So that also stops me. I could do that better. Oh, they put that lame piece of thing out. How could I do it? That's a judgment thing, but it's still all that head trash, right? And I'm looking to the right. Sorry, guys, because I had put my comments thing away from me and I want to be able to read them real time because I get a lot of, I love getting the bounce of the feedback. So Here's why we're going to start to move through this. We are always looking to prove something about ourselves. For you, Kevin, it may be that I'm just not going to do it. Why bother? I, like I already had this mastered in my head. We have these stories we tell ourselves. And what happens is that we work too hard. We say yes to clients that we shouldn't, particularly as freelancers. I often, when I was um, a copywriter, I never identified myself as a freelancer for the sheer reason that I wanted to step into business ownership and freelancer meant I was moving from place to place. And it didn't keep me intentional about who I said yes to and how I actually ran my business. So I have, this is my thing, if you will. But the truth is that we want to adopt the mindsets that will actually move us forward. So we end up working too hard, following what others tell us to do only later to find out that's not what we wanted in the first place or it's not going to work for us. I once had somebody in one of my groups say that they did their intakes the way that Joanna Weeb, those of you in the copywriter world know who Joanna Weeb is. She's like the guru and everyone's like, I'm doing my intakes like she does. And I go, he's, but they were like, I'm losing clients after that first call. I'm like, is it working for you? What happens is when we allow our mindset to take hold, I don't know this person knows better is we end up building businesses that don't work for us. And so we end up struggling, working too hard, doing more and not accomplishing what we want. So what I want you to do is that one of the things that Nick said is we're not, yeah, we're gonna talk more about groupthink, Clary, others knowing better. It is the biggest killer for your business and we never take ownership of the business we want. So one of the things that Nick had talked about is you can't cover things up. You can't cover these feelings up. There's a reason thinking positively doesn't work. I'm just going to think positively today. I'm going to go after. We're going to have affirmations, mantras. They don't actually work. And here's why. Like your computer, you are downloading information into your brain all day long. It gets stored in your brain into the subconscious part. And that's the part that's running the show. So no matter what you tell your conscious brain, 
Your willpower, I'm gonna be positive today, can only last as long as your willpower does. And that usually runs out, depending on the day you're having, by noon. And so one of the things that we wanna remember is our conscious brain is only responsible, get this, for 10% of our choices. The remaining 90% is all the junk that's in your subconscious brain. And so this is the reason that you can't raise your prices, that your clients are not the ones that you really want to work with, that you keep discounting, that you sabotage, as Nick brought up, doing client work, never working on your business. Anyone here? Like following every should out there. So I want to get to this point that the answer isn't about accountability. The answer isn't about willpower. The answer isn't about, I have to be positive instead of the negative Nelly. They will only go far so far because, and I, I would love to put this nice, nicely and I'm not going to, but it's my favorite phrase because it gets to the point, but all of those things are like putting ice cream on poop. A few scoops down, what do you still have? And so it's a gross image, I know, I'm sorry, but it's really about, this is what, we're all trying to do band-aids, quick fixes. So your patterns are going to keep showing up. You're going to look for outer strategies if you do mantras and those kinds of things. But what has to change is who you're being. So what has to change is the confidence, the self-worth, the thing that gives you the ability to say no without explanation and with grace. The thing that allows you to put your boundaries, take more responsibility for your business, to charge what you deserve. And I use that D word because it's a charged word. You have to change first who you're being and what you will and will not take into your life. So instead of doing more, it's about being. So who has heard the be, do, have concept before? Who here has actually heard people talk about be, do, have? You have to fill up the tire before you can roll. I love Sarah's. Sarah's got a bunch of these. For all of us marketing, that for, all, for a lot of us that it's marketing, knowledge and business knowledge, right? We want to know more. By the way, I am an attorney. I am a copywriter. I like knowing stuff. I'm also a quick start, which can be a problem though. But this arming ourselves with knowledge is that doing more. It's a bargaining with the universe. So let's talk about what be, do, have is. Most of us are showing up in the world doing. We have this bargain with the universe, with the world, whatever. I'm going to do these things so I can have these things. And then I'm going to be, I'm going to be a leader. Once I achieve this, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be happy. We live in this someday fantasy that if we do all the things and we have them, we'll then feel good. I grew up this way. My parents were doctors and my choice was doctor, lawyer, and I fainted at the side of blood. So I went to law school because I was an English major. What do you do with that? Right. Back then. And so copywriting didn't really exist in the same way. And so I checked all the boxes. Went to law school, graduated the honors, got a job, was a criminal defense attorney, kicked ass, married, had kids. And at 34, I was the most miserable human being alive. I'd done all the things. I was supposed to be happy. Same thing goes with success though. What we don't realize is that we have to be first. So this is why I said I'm pulling up from what Nick was talking about, because I think this is so important. We have to start with who we are being. Who do you want to be? Like, if you think about this in your business, who do you need to be? All of you are growing your business here. All of you are B2B writers. Who do you need to be? Right? This year, I need to be and I don't actually like my word when I describe this for people, support it. Because I tend to do everything on my own. I need to remember to look for the who instead of all my always thinking I have to be the person. So who do you need to be? Is it confident? Is it, you know, visible? Right? Is it, I don't know, if they pick a word, throw them out there. Bold. I always get bold. A lot of people like, I have to be bold. What is the word that you need to be? And so many of us say, I can't, or I'll be that when. This is a someday fantasy that many of us engage in and that we bargain for. We must first say, I am this. Now, many of you are like, I'm not showing the confidence. How do I do this? I'm not showing the easy person. I'm not showing all that. It starts with saying the statement, I am X. And 
What it also means is asking yourself the question, how does that kind of person act? What are the things they do? When have I been this? Look, I had to look for a certain confidence that maybe I held as a mom that allowed me to translate it over into the business world or some place where I'd seen I had pulled confidence. Well, I was really confident when. Chances are you will find that place. Chances are, you know, doer. Maybe for some of you who do sit and watch people, I am a doer. When were you a doer? What are the kinds of things you have to do to be that person? And the truth is once you start to live, embody, practice this, it's an opportunity for you to think through this. Now, I take people through this kind of a exercise using four key pillars of growth, visibility, offer, sales, and execution. This last one is really the last step for people to get out there and really execute on all the things you have. But look for those mindset traps. Where are you doing more instead of being, right? Where are you adopting other people's stuff because you don't trust? When you know exactly, when you know who you're going to be, this group think disappears. I'm going to take a step back for a second and why is group think dangerous? Group think is dangerous is because <clears throat> in copywriting, I've seen this almost more than anywhere. There is comparison. There is this, well, I'm making six figures within a year. There is this, I'm doing it this way. You should be doing it this way kind of thing. I haven't seen this in any other industry almost as much as this one. There is one way, the way, follow it. You're either in, there was, there used to be like the Tarzan K camp, right? There's the Rob and Kara camp. There is this camp. There's Sarah's camp, which Sarah's incorporates mindset. So we're good. But like, we're never pulling through and saying, is this going to work for us? Does this piece work for us? I'm a huge follower of um, Russell Lachlan, who likes to do non-launches. He doesn't launch. He likes to engage in conversation and have relationships. But does everything Ross does work for me? No. And we can all fall into this danger of group think of, no, no, you should be doing this. Don't do this. You're good at this. So that means you should build this. When you know who you are being, it becomes easier to say no. You release frustration. You get clarity. There's nothing more dangerous than waking up like I did. $100,000 of education, 17 years of being a trial lawyer going, I hate this. It's not that I hate this, but I did just get to a point. I said, I can't do this one more day. A lot of copywriters are like, I need to build a course. I need to build a something to get out of doing what I am doing now. Part of the reason is we haven't built a business that we love. We haven't been intentional about this. So I know this is a lot of talking. I'd love to hear where this is landing. What are some of the frustrations that you're feeling in your business today? You know, type it in the chat. What is it that you want to have? Sarah, are you saying you want to pipe in and talk? The question, yeah. <laughs> Usually I try to hold back, but I think what can come up a lot for new people when they're getting into the business world. I think what can come up for a lot of people when they first get into the business world is if I pretend to be confident right now, I'm lying and I'm not being authentic and things about the ethicalness of it come up. Can you tell us about how being the thing before you have the thing, how that's not inauthentic? Or like, how do you see that would make it easier for somebody who feels really sensitive about that to do it? This was never one of my problems. And it was my sister's problem who's also in the copywriting world. And she would just look at me and I'd go out into the world because I'm a quick start. And she, what the F are you doing? I have a 21 year old daughter who is in, entered into, she actually is more on the editing side. And so I can, we, we have these conversations a lot. And the truth is that she's spent a lot of hours gaining the knowledge. She's been in the courses. She's learning a skill and a framework. And I think we come at this from a position of what do I have to offer when somebody else can offer more? The truth is we always come from this position and it's very self for like focused. How am I showing up? How, what do I have to give? But the truth is we must come from a position again of B, what value are you giving? Look at it as from a value perspective. The people you work with have a problem. You are solving it. Does it matter if you have 10 years of experience versus two minutes? If you can actually solve that problem, it's how you show up. I get a lot of questions of how do I know when I am not like 
when I don't have the skills versus needing more skills because there's the serial course takers. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that you'll know on a sales call, can you do this? Do you have a framework? Do you have a process? If you have something you can take people through, chances are you're doing well. You will always learn what more you need, but to assume that you must gather every single piece of information, you will never put yourself out there. Again, who do I need to be? I need to be confident. What are the things I need to do? I need to outline a process. I need to have the ability to have an offer. I need to have a, a, a sales call and I need to put myself out in front of my audience. We then get really clear on the steps as opposed to collecting more. It becomes this never always shifting mind. So we get stuck in scarcity mindset because when we think, okay, there's not gonna be enough out there for me or I don't have the confidence. So I guess I look at it this way. You have an opportunity to start to shift and land in the person that you need to be first. Amy Porterfield used to talk about this and I don't necessarily agree be the expert before in the sense like, oh, I'm an expert. And there was a big marketing ploy years ago with, with a lot of copywriters saying they were the expert. Talk more about the value you can provide for somebody and land in that because it's going to give you the expertise you need. It's not about talking about the expertise. It's about all of the things that you can provide somebody. I think it's this game that we play with ourselves and saying that you have to have all these things focuses again, I'm gonna bargain and become confident later. It has to start first. It has to start with having a vision, aligning yourself with what you're doing every single day and being that person. Because if you're out of alignment, you will not be confident. Mm. I know this is high level and I, I think for a lot of people, it's probably going to be a little absorbing, but I wanted to go there because it's inauthentic for me to say, I'm going to solve one problem here today by, unless you start with all the way at the top. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really the message I want to give. Think about if anything, who do you need to be today? Does that make sense? Yeah. And I love what you said earlier about think to another time. Let's say you need to bring confidence to a call think through another time where you were confident. And it's like the confidence you're bringing doesn't have to be to each situation. It's just you from your life and you bring that with you everywhere. So yeah. being able to integrate every other experience you've had with this new experience, that's what's going to let you be confident when you're trying things that are terrifying, that appear not to be safe, but actually are just pushing your comfort zone. Love that. The other piece of this I wanted to hit on is, is as you're being, so maybe this may be hard for people. I don't know who I need to be. I think the one thing that as freelancers, as writers, we forget, you know, I know there's a huge bunch of writers who end up in this world from either it's, they've done some corporate work. They've realized they like to write that they're good, that there is this business that we've all learned that's called copywriting <laughs> and you can actually get paid for it. It's really cool. But we do need to start to think about what's the vision for my business. One of the first places we always go, anybody who works with me, the first place you go is, is creating a vision. Most people's vision begin with money. And the reality is that money is just the byproduct. What does your life really look like? What's your vision, business vision look like? How do you show up every day? What is exciting? What's compelling in this world? Who are the clients that you want to work with? We haven't defined this we have no place to anchor ourselves into. And our head trash has the ability then to tell us, go listen to somebody else. I don't know better. I will never be enough. I'm never going to actually implement that thing. Really getting clear on what you want is the first place that you want to go. It will help you define your be because you have some place to land. You have a vision that will carry you through your yeses and no. My vision tells me, is this client right for me? My vision tells me, do I want to work four days a week or seven? I used to work like six or seven days a week. Do I want to end this day and show up for the people that matter? These feel scary when money is at issue. And if they're not dealt with now, they will keep showing up. The one thing I want to say is this head trash doesn't go away when you reach that pinnacle of success, it just changes from how am I going to make the money to how do I not lose it? If you know your vision and who you're being, 
then you get to actually start to get moving. I do have some vision work that I do with people. I have some podcast stuff that I could probably send over that have people listen. This is your first place. I also have a freebie that I'm happy to share too. It's my unstoppable book that will give you an outline of some of this. I'll pop it into the chat. I love that. And even- but I, I can hear everybody processing and I, I love that everyone's processing, right? I think that mindset of, instead of looking at the world of business and saying, how can I push myself through this cheese grater to get what I need? Just the way you shared, I'm sitting here wondering if you fit into my vision is a different way to look at copy and content. And ironically, that's what's going to make people really want to work with you because they're going to sense that confidence and that power and just be drawn to that. So I love that. That's the kind of stuff. If you follow Linda's stuff, that's what you're going to get. Yeah, <laughs> so I shared 20, the link to your my website. My 21 year old says no to clients already. I mean, oh. She's new and she already says no to people. She's like, no, that's not who I want to work with. That's what comes from understanding her vision and who she wants to be. And I think it's that powerful and that confidence that your yearning comes from your first no. Man, I remember it. It was so strong. Reach out if you need support. I love chatting. So come listen to the podcast. It's there for everybody. There's a great one this week about success being in your head. So it builds on this stuff. So nice. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks. And yeah, I've shared Linda's links. We've got a great podcast that's at least twice a month, if not every week. And then mm -hmm. your website, of course. Yeah. So thanks. Awesome. Thank you for letting me be here and just being part of your group. I, I know what value you provide, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. That is all for today. But I just really appreciate you guys taking two hours to sit and think about your mindset because this really could be the first day where you look at your problem the next time you see it and you have that pause in that moment where you can decide to do something different instead of TikTok, I'm talking to myself and social media, comparisonitis, all these things that are, that are keeping us from what we want to do, that we can pause and choose something different and see where that takes us. So I'm very excited about that. So thank you guys so much. And I'll see you next month. As a side note, if you enjoyed our conversation today, I want to encourage you to check out the B2B Writing Career Kickstarter. This is the all-in-one class that introduces you to B2B, helps you figure out your niche, and then a couple times a year, we actually get together and write your first clips together. If you'd like more information about that, just click the link in the course below or head to b2bwritinginstitute.com. Thanks for joining.